Oh, Barbara. Are you here checking up on me? No, no, we're just stopping by on the way back to the city. All right, come on in. I will, I will. Can I get you a drink? Coffee. All the Coke, please. Coke it is. So, do you eat here a lot? I've never been here before, Jack. How do you two know each other? She's on assignment for the magazine. Who is she? That's Barbara Ehrenreich, well-known essayist, probably one of the best journalists in the country. It's 1998, Jack, a moment of unparalleled prosperity in America. What the chairman of the Federal Reserve called irrational exuberance. The Clinton administration's welfare reforms have herded millions of Americans into the low-wage workforce. But how does one prosper or even survive if one makes six or seven dollars an hour? And Barbara's trying to find out how the trick is done. So for the last year, she's been working at low-wage jobs, living in cheap rooms, traveling around the country, working as a domestic maid, as a Walmart associate, as a waitress. Coffee and Coke. Oh, thanks a lot. <clears throat> Barbara, this is Jack. Hi, Jack. Nice to meet you. Jack Likewise. just graduated from Yale. Oh. Goldman's made him an offer, but he doesn't know whether he wants to be in the investment banking business. So I'm taking him on the rounds and introducing him to people in other professions. Well, I hope you're not thinking of waitressing. <laughs> Why? Has, has it been that tough? Does he know what I'm doing, what I'm up to here? I, I told him. Oh, well, you know, you can't feel too sorry for me, because I'm really a journalist. I'm doing this briefly. But one of the very humbling things for me has been to learn, really, that there are no unskilled jobs. All jobs take skill and intelligence and experience. They're hard. From the first day I started working here, I've been running. And first, I was running around after Gail. She's another waitress here. OK, Barb, can you take the pancakes to 63? I should be explaining how to do things and also telling me about um, her trouble, she's been living in a van. So I ended up living in my truck out here in the parking lot from like March to July. She works full time, but she can't afford an apartment or anything regular like that. Oh. But anyway, it's, it's, so, it's so much, it's okay. overwhelming. Right. I can't even think about the fact that I may be too tired to get out to the parking lot by the end of the day. So what was the end result? I mean, did, do people, can you get by, in other words? Not on the jobs I've had. Right now, I'm already $100 behind on the rent that I need uh, to pay for my half-size trailer in the trailer park. So, you know, even living in a trailer park seems to me a little ambitious at this moment. But we're talking about the height of the last boom, right? Yes. Height of the boom, all boats rising, building a better world. Well, exactly, in a way. But not entirely. Full employment, pretty much, yes. at the time. Wages should be technically rising, right? That's what you'd think, according to the law of supply and demand. But management will do anything to keep from having to raise wages, even when there's a so-called shortage of labor. We created a lot of jobs in this country in the 90s, but they're not jobs that a person can live on. And that's what, you know, completely undermines the myth of this great American job-producing economy. If you can't live on it, it just doesn't count, it seems to me. It's, it's not that people are even living at a sustainable level of suffering in many cases. They are living in what I would call a state of emergency. Not enough to eat in many cases, inadequate housing or no home, inadequate child care, child care that really has them nervous all day about how their children are. I'm just having a, a tough time because you don't s you don't see this, you don't see things being as bad as you describe them. You don't, you see, don't see any of this. You don't see it, Jack, because you hang out at Goldman Sachs or wherever it is you want to go to work. But they have philanthropy, <laughs> public service. A lot of those people devote millions and millions and millions of dollars to building houses in poor communities. Philanthropy. To... Don't tell me about philanthropy, Jack. The real philanthropists in our society are the people who work for less than they can actually live on because they are giving of their time and their energy and their talents all the time so that people like you can be dressed well and fed uh, cheaply and so on. They're giving to you.
exactly when this will happen. People are going to get tired of getting so little in return for their work, and they're going to demand to be paid with their work. And there will be a lot of anger when that day comes, and I think there will be strikes and disruption, but the sky will not fall, and we will all be better off for it in the end. Now it don't always seem fair to me, but I'll get through it if I try. I don't call this prosperity Cause we're just barely getting by Until my daughter breaks a bone What if my old Buick dies? Or Verizon disconnects the phone And they mess up my whole credit line Nico and I Nickel and dime. Oh, for Christ's sake. There's no free lunch and no free time. There's no ladder I'm gonna climb. I'd rather be a life of crime than just get nickel and dime. Don't take it too hard, Jack. Remember Voltaire. The comfort of the rich depends upon an abundance of the poor. It's a law of economics as old as supply and demand. So what do you think? 